Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be learning a little bit about the Stripe Tax API. We're going to be diving deep and be looking specifically at the calculation object. And I have my friend here from the Tax API team who's going to talk to us all about it. So, Alex, how are you doing, man? Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, hey, doing good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. So, why don't you tell folks a little bit about who you are and what exactly you do on the Tax team? Yeah, so my name is Alex. Uh, I've been in Stripe for two years now, and I'm on the Tax API team. We basically provide this set of tools and APIs for merchants to stay on top of their tax compliance. Nice. I know for a lot of folks, tax can be a scary thing to deal with. So I'm really glad we have folks like you that are working on this to make this so much easier for developers. Now, today we're going to focus on the calculation. Can you tell me a little bit about what the calculation object is and why do I, why should I even care about it as a developer? Yeah. So calculation object is basically your entry point to all things tax. Uh, it's used for various things, but mostly for estimation or, well, calculation of the taxes that you should collect if you were to proceed with a certain order. So it's like saying, hey, I'm selling these products and I just want to get an idea, like you said, an estimation of what the tax I would be or should be collecting looks like. Or even, again, as I'm charging customers, like what's the tax I should be adding to this price or should be collecting when I'm going through my checkout process? Yep. All right. Well, that sounds pretty straightforward. Why don't we take a look at the demo? Do you have anything you want to show us? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. All right. Um, so this demo is fairly straightforward. And there are three elements on your screen. On the left, address. So this would be the customer address provided by customer at the checkout time or save before. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, the items at the top right of your screen. Uh, which is just the representation of your card. Um, so the items that the customer wants to buy from you. Uh, and the buy button, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. And then I'm looking at this. I can see those different prices and, and products as well there on the right side. But it says all the tax is zero. Do I not, am I not paying taxes on these? Like, how come, how come my taxes are saying zero in there? What's going on? Yeah. So... There are a couple of things that dictate whether or not you should be collecting tax. And these are the things that we actually need from you to calculate taxes properly. So the first one, it was on the, on the screen, it's address. So in this case, it's Chicago, Illinois. Um, the information about the products you're saying, right? The items. Uh, and in this demo, they're already provided. Uh, then there is information about your business itself, right? And there are two pieces of information that we actually need that are available in the dashboard. So if you look at the dashboard, once you first um, enable Stripe Tax, you will be able to see that in the settings, you have the details like origin address. And in this case, uh, let's say that our business is located in US California, right? Um, that's the first piece of information that we need from your uh, business. The second piece is registrations. Stripe tax is only collecting or calculating taxes for the locations that your business is registered in. So uh, in this case, for the purposes of the demo, let's assume that we are uh, registered in the United States, Illinois. And let's say we are registered to collect both Chicago lease tax Bloomington amusement tax, and that's it. And I'm guessing too, as I add other registrations and there's more specific tax rules, kind of like what you showed in Illinois, it'll let me choose those options, right? So if I'm in this time of year, is in Illinois, but it could be, you know, Washington State or California or New York or anything like that. If there's anything that's specific about um, tax registration in those um, cities or countries, will be able to let me know um, inside of there, and I'll be able to select those options. Yes, correct. Uh, in fact, for the purposes of this demo, we actually need the Florida registration as well. Oh, uh -huh. sounds good. And as you can see in Florida, you only have one additional custom option, which is the Florida State and Local Com Communications Tax, right? And we are going to select that. 
let's start collecting now. Okay. So now we have our tax registrations entered. And just, just for the record, this is not something that Stripe is doing for you. You're just letting us straight know that you have been registered in these, you know, in these locations. So just for, so just so that folks know, like clicking the button does not register your business in these locations, right? Like this is something you have to do outside of Stripe with those local governments to make sure that like your, you know, your business is collecting tax the way it's supposed to. That is correct. Although uh, we are starting a project related to that, that would help you as in merchants uh, to streamline the process of registering in certain places. Nice. All right. So now that we have our registrations, why don't we head back to the demo then, and let's let's see how that's how does that change things. Right. So actually, since we started with Florida, right? Let's check out Florida first. Uh, if we just resubmit the Florida address, and sorry, I'm using the predefined addresses to not spend too much time, of course. That's uh, totally fine. Right. Um, as you can see here, right, uh, in the case of Florida, uh, when the customer is in Florida, you have the Florida registrations. Uh, only two of the items are actually taxable in this case, right? Um, and as you can see on your screen, we do have uh, three uh, tax reasons actually here, right? Um, as you can see, the vintage sounds is taxed both for communications tax and the sales tax. So I'm guessing based on the type of product as well, like that also gives Stripe information to know, well, how exactly do we calculate the tax for these, for these particular products? And since those products are not just you know, they're all different products, it's the same company, but because they have each different tax codes, that also gives you that information to know, okay, well, this is how we're going to calculate tax for them. Yes, that is correct. So from your perspective, it's as easy as specifying that certain product has certain PDC and Stripe tax handles the rest of uh, determining whether or not in certain jurisdiction with certain combination of registration and customer address, whether or not it should even be taxable, and also how much should you collect. Now, what I love about this is you actually haven't even gone through a payment flow yet, right? Like this is purely just still in the estimation phase using information that you have, such as, you know, again, addresses for the customer, the business, um, tax codes, and those types of things. Um, what if, what if I already have my customer information already? Right? Do I have to type this stuff all in already? Like, what if I'm already using Stripe and I don't want my customer to like fill out another form or you know have to spend the time typing things out? Can I can I just give them like an ID or something like that and have it like inspect my customer and have it know you know what the location is and what some of this information is? Yeah. In, in fact, one of the examples that I have here is just using the customer information already saved in your dashboard or whichever flow you have, uh, most importantly, it's in the Stripe customer object. And you can just pass along that customer object into the tax API and we'll infer the address information from there. Another thing I like about this is it also opens up the use case for using this in some other non-payment scenarios, but also if you wanted to use them with you know, other payment processors for whatever reason. Right, so now you could be able to use Stripe Tax with, well, it's actually anybody that you wanted to, right? Like you don't have to be processing payments with Stripe to be able to do that. Yes, in fact, this this whole demo is not using any payment functionality of any of the payment providers whatsoever, and this is still utilizing the whole power of Stripe Tax for the calculations and all. All right, well, I think I think we've seen enough of this demo. Uh, can we actually take a look at the code and see what it takes to wire this up for, for its work? Sure. All right, so we're looking at Visual Studio Code now, and this actually looks like a Python application you have wired up to make use of the Stripe Tax API. Yes, you're dead on. Um, and the only actually relevant piece of code here is the call to the Stripe Tax calculations screen. So all of the tax estimations happen here. Uh, everything that you need to provide is the line item information. So you saw it in the demo as the items. 
Uh, the customer details, uh, those, as I mentioned, those can be the customer object or the ad hoc details. So um, I did provide the example uh, in comments here just for visual purposes. Um, and the rest is passed from your information, from your settings and registrations that you specified in the dashboard. Well, this looks pretty straightforward, right? Like there's not a lot of code that's actually happening here, right? Obviously, once you authenticate your Stripe clients using, you know, the requisite API keys and things of that nature, now essentially you're just calling tax calculation.create, giving them that information that it needs, like you mentioned, like the currency and the line items, customer details, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now I have now I have a calculation object that I could pass around. And I'm sure it has properties that I can inspect, like, you know, total tax amounts and tax tax reasons and things like that of that nature. So now I could look and I could see, okay, well, this exactly is how the tax is ca being calculated and here what the totals look like, you know, for this particular, um, for this particular set of products that I want to charge for. Yes. Yes. Uh, we also provide some of the like helper functionality, if you will, in our API objects, uh, for example, in calculations, right? Uh, you don't need to actually go line item by line item to calculate how much you should calculate overall or collect overall uh, or charge the end customer, right? Uh, we provide several uh, several fields for that, uh, like amount total, right? That would give you the total amount that you need to charge customer. Thanks. Well, Alex, definitely thank you so much for showing us this. Um, if folks want to get their hands on this code, is it available anywhere? Um, maybe on a GitHub repo or something like that, that they could you know, clone and, and use? Yes. Uh, All right. We will try to push it to y'all and give you the nice little link. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Um, really appreciate you coming on and giving us a little bit of insight as to how the calculation object works in the Stripe Tax API. Uh, and thank all of you for watching. If you want to learn more about the Tax API calculations and some of the other functionality that's available, I definitely recommend that you head over to our documentation website where we have tons of examples and explanations about all of the details and knobs and switches and things that you could change to make use of some of these things inside of here. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.